Have you ever wanted to play as RoboCop while watching the movies or just in general you just see RoboCop and go, wow, you know, playing as RoboCop in a game would probably be really cool. Well now you can with RoboCop Rogue City. Well, I mean, technically I guess you could have before because there's been RoboCop games previously but uh, they've never really been talked about and I've never played them. So maybe that's something I should check out later but since no one ever talks about them, we're not going to talk about them either. So let's get right into RoboCop Rogue City. One of the first things I got to mention about this game is the return of Peter Weller as the voice of Robocop, which makes playing Robocop more immersive and takes you back to the first two movies. As you wish, creep. You are under arrest. Moving on to your primary weapon, which is of course the Auto 9 pistol, which you can upgrade and modify to your heart's content. And it has three different fire modes. The first fire mode that you get and the one that you're going to mostly probably be using is burst, which you get automatically. It will always be, it will always have burst. And then you can upgrade and you can get full auto or you can get single. And there are PCB boards that you can select to upgrade your pistol and you dive into them like it's a circuit puzzle. So if you've ever played a game that has like a circuit puzzle where you're trying to redirect circuits to get to the, the opposite side and stuff. It's basically that and set for there's a challenge because when you're upgrading you have to dodge debuffs which appear on the board as red zones. So you have to try to direct the current to the upgrades but trying to not let the current hit the red zones or else you'll get debuffs like minus 20% damage or something like that. And then you have to use these pieces that have four directions. So you got up, down, left, right, and they can redirect the current based on the directions of the pieces. And some of the upgrades that you get on your pistol, for example, are like exploding bullets, splitting bullets, armor piercing bullets, and it's also... The PCB board is how you get the fire mode. So there'll be like a fire mode in the big, it'll be like a big orange piece. And then along with the other upgrades, and then you can try to unlock full auto or single shot, but not every PC board has the same upgrades. So some will only have like one to two upgrades, and then some will have like five upgrades. And as you progress in the game, you get better PCB boards, you get more pieces and you can get more upgrades. There's even sometimes where you can have multiple fire modes and switch between them, but if you prefer a particular fire mode, you might, might want to focus on that fire mode and then try to get upgrades based on that fire mode. Like if you have the single fire one, you're going to want to up the damage to make sure at least when you're firing your single bullet, it will one shot every enemy. Whereas if you have the upgrade where it's full auto and you have an unlimited magazine and you never have to reload then you probably don't have to worry about damage too much and you're just gonna worry about other things like uh, weapon accuracy or, or something like that it really depends on what kind of style you're going for and you can also increase the damage magazine size but magazine size isn't really uh, it doesn't really mean much if you do have the where you never have to reload because then you don't have to worry about magazine size and there's there's much more upgrades that you can get and the variety of the upgrades and the fire modes on your pistol keeps the gameplay a bit more interesting of course you can pick up the random weapons that the bad guys are using like the 50 cal sniper the uzi uh the tech 9 submachine gun or some some uh, some other guns in there, but mainly you're going to be using your auto 9 pistol And there's one gun that I thought was missing in this game that I just want to talk about It's not really a downside. So I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna just say it right now is the I don't know exactly what it's called But it's the the sniper rifle that's in the first movie that shoots the exploding bullets like it's just it just is like a sniper rifle that it shoots and it just explodes everything I thought maybe that would be in the game, but it's not. So the main gun that you're going to be using in this game is the Auto 9 pistol. And with the infinite ammo upgrade and the full auto mode, just a warning, if you do use the full auto with the infinite ammo, it kind of makes things a bit too easy and can maybe be a little bit boring if you play with that through the entire game. 
Combat in general in this game just feels satisfying. With everything pretty much reacting to being shot. And most of it is actually seems to be destructible. So there will just be objects and as you're shooting they'll just kind of explode. There's also lots of blood when shooting enemies. But there could be more blood splatters onto things. I'm just going to say that you can never have enough blood. But you can also you can grab enemies and throw them through through certain destructible walls, which is cool. You can throw them into stuff. You can pick them and throw them into enemies and stuff like that, which is also super satisfying. And there were parts of the game where I didn't even really want to use the gun because it was just so satisfying to pick up other objects or other enemies and throw them around, taking out everyone in the way. Especially with chairs. I don't I don't know what it is, but chairs in this game for some reason. They're probably the most overpowered things in this game. Like, I'll be shooting, like, there'll be one of this, these armored enemies coming up the stairs or something, and I'll just be shooting him a lot, and it'll be hitting his armor, and the guy will be tanking a few bullets, and then I'll just pick up a chair for one of them. I'll just throw the chair at their legs, and they're just taken out immediately. Need to move. You can explore the skill tree to upgrade your stats. The skill tree in this game isn't like anything crazy. It's just kind of your basic RPG skills like fatality, armor, combat. There's engineering for opening safes without codes if you want. Uh, there's some other ones, but vitality armor and combat skills seem to be the most useful and engineering actually to level it fully up and be able to unlock safes without finding the code is actually kind of useless because most of the time the codes are not very difficult to find so you can just easily find the codes and then uh unlock the safes and the only thing safes give you is extra xp so you unlock a safe and you just get extra XP so it's not really worth you know you basically get all the extra XP but then you gotta you just wasted like let's say you did get engineering so you just like wasted a bunch of levels to get engineering and then you just all the extra XP you get is just putting into the levels that you you just spent on engineering so it's kind of I don't know it's just kind of engineering just kind of seems useless I didn't really I didn't really use it so there's also abilities when you progress in the skill lines like I think it's the fourth slot and the last slot in the skill tree of any skill line you'll unlock some sort of passive or an ability so one of the abilities is like shockwave and you'll perform a shockwave and it'll stun all the enemies and then if you get all the way down the skill line instead of the shockwave stunning the enemies the shockwave will just take out all the enemies and then you got a speedy dash or at least that's what I call it. It's just kind of like a dash. You just hold the space bar. And then the longer you hold it, the further you'll dash. So if you just kind of click it, you'll dash a little bit forward. It's kind of useful because, well, it's kind of useful because you can like get out of a situation. But it's more of a fun because you can just quickly run up on an enemy, grab them, and then just like slam them, throw them against the wall, which is kind of fun. But uh, I also don't really remember Robocop ever running. I mean, I guess he did in the 2014 reboot that I can remember. But we don't really talk about that movie. Anyways, though, the abilities enhance the gameplay. However, as I was playing the game and remembering the movie, there is, and, you know, just Robocop in general. Robocop has a targeting system. And, you know, it's like that, like, green cross thing, and it targets people and stuff. Anyways, I was just wondering why there's not a targeting ability similar, similar to Red Dead's Deadeye or Fallout's VAT system. Because that would be an awesome addition in the game. And I know they have something, like, they were kind of going for, like, a slow motion where you, like, aim for yourself kind of thing, which I don't mind because that's also good. Maybe it would be good to have both, but if there was a targeting ability, so like you could press a button and then you could use that green uh, cross thing, whatever you want to call it, crosshair, and you can mark enemies, and then as soon as the ability like ends, Robocop quickly shoots all the enemies, that would be pretty cool too. 
game also incorporates investigation segments allowing you to scan and try and solve cases while it's not overly in depth as it is mostly just scanning things until you find the right one or if it's like a body or something you just scan the evidence like a gunshot wound or something and then robocop talks about it but I, I think it's a nice addition and I do like the investigating. I just wish maybe it was a little bit more in depth, but I think it strikes a decent balance between investigation and then you get into the action and then you get into some more investigation and it keeps swapping. The developers also nailed it, absolutely nailed it with the level design, recreating iconic areas from the Robocop universe. The environments look straight out of the movies and contribute to overall aesthetic and ad immersion the levels feeling lived in and they just look great i mean they just look good that's my that's my that's my thing is that just the levels just look so good the only issue the only issue and this really isn't an issue because the game is kind of linear so it really doesn't matter too much to me but there could be a little bit more exploration and a little bit more areas to explore in some of the levels but overall the levels look incredible they look really good and i had fun going through the environments and fighting all the enemies so i wasn't sure where to put this one if i would put this in the good or the bad it's kind of somewhere in the middle and that's the story now i like the characters i think i think pretty much most of the characters are good and they're fine but the problem i have with the story is they say they wanted to create like an original RoboCop story for this game and everything, but uh, I mean technically it's it is like an original RoboCop story, but it kind of feels like it's not completely original because I feel like from watching the previous RoboCop or all the RoboCop movies, it just kind of seems like we've been through the story before, it just with different. So it's like it's kind of like a similar story, just slightly different new characters or different characters introduced into the story but it's it, it just feels very similar like i've already kind of experienced this story you know what i mean you know what i'm trying to say that's what i'm trying to say and i don't know the story was just kind of like in the middle for me it wasn't great but it wasn't bad So let's move on to the bad stuff. The most off-putting aspect of this game is the inconsistent lip syncing. I just I don't know if it's because something in the game goes wrong or if the lip syncing just doesn't work properly in this game or if this is how it's supposed to work. I, I'm not really sure what is going on here, but the dialogues often don't match up with character lips, leading to a slightly weird experience when their lips stop moving while they're still talking. But it's weird because most of the time RoboCop will be talking and it'll look really good. His mouth will be moving just right and everything most of the time. But then the other characters will be like, they'll just talk but their lips are behind what they're saying. Or, or there's the third thing where RoboCop or the other people start talking but then their lips don't move at all. So I don't I don't know what's going on there, but there's something weird there. And uh, if the lip syncing got changed or fixed, I see. I don't know if it's broken or if it's just bad. That's the thing. If it's bad, then it would be nice if it got improved. Or if it's broken, it'd be nice if it got fixed. Either way, the the lip syncing when it doesn't match up, it's kind of weird. I will follow the signal to track the doctor's computer. You will keep her safe. Safe from what exactly? Who were those guys? Mercenaries on Wendell's payroll. The same ones that paid me a visit at the hospital? Wendell should be grateful. You keep reducing his overhead. I am expecting a huge payoff. I hear that. Another thing is the option to combine PCB upgrade pieces into better ones. It sounds like a good idea, and it is a good idea, but it's often completely useless because when you try to combine these pieces, most of the time when you combine them, it results in worse pieces, rendering the feature almost pointless. And I've seen plenty of other people talk about this too, 
when I thought I was doing it wrong and I went into the discussions tab and see what other people were saying and they were saying pretty much the same thing that you can put in good pieces and still get bad pieces so you can put in three good pieces and instead of getting one extremely good piece you'll just end up getting one worse piece than the three pieces you just put in there so it's pretty much pointless and useless and you're you'll be better off never using the combined feature in this game the next is crashes especially during level loading i don't know what it is for some reason it seems to happen more during loading level than during the middle of a level or something i don't know it's, it's very annoying and it can cause progress loss uh if it happens in the middle of your level or something because you'll get set to the last checkpoint so it, since you can't save manually and crashes can happen you'll probably experience some sort of progress loss if the game crashes i had a total of five crashes in the 13 hours i played the game and i know other people have had crashes while playing the game i don't know what it is about this game but it just crashes and when it crashes it doesn't even like crash and close the game it just crashes into a blank screen and then you have to hit the windows key and then click on the second tab that it opens up and then click ok and then the game will will close and then you have to launch it again i don't, I don't know what it is about this game and crashes but it does crash on top of crashes this game has performance problems and i'm a i'm actually going to start soon i'm just going to start blaming performance problems on the unreal engine 5 because it seems like every unreal engine 5 game that releases has some sort of performance problems like remnant rise to ashes 2 or remnant 2 i'm not sure it's called rise to ashes 2 but remnant 2 when that came out i'm pretty sure it's still now it has huge performance problems and the game just runs terrible now this game doesn't run completely terrible because i actually found it to uh run decently most of the time but this game just randomly drops from like 60 frames per second or more to immediately five frames per second all of a sudden just randomly you'll just turn a corner and then all of a sudden all the frames just have disappeared and they're just there's no sign of them ever coming back also i almost forgot because it's, it's really not that important but it's just something that i discovered and found which is weird and i've never seen it happen in any other game i have ever played but this game breaks during daylight savings time so if you're playing the game and then daylight savings time happens this game breaks and you will not be able to leave the level so I'm not sure exactly what happens, but it's something to do with the saves or something, and because of the time switch, it breaks the saves, and then you'll have to restart the game, wait for the time to get back to where it was, or restart... Well, actually, I restarted the level many times, so I think you'll just have to wait. If you randomly play this game during daylight savings time, for some reason, it'll break for like an hour or two, and you'll have to wait to be able to play it again and it not break. It's very weird. I've never seen it happen with another game, but I just thought I'd mention it. In conclusion, RoboCop Rogue City brings the iconic character RoboCop to life with solid gameplay elements, despite some drawbacks mainly being performance, crashes, and the lip syncing, the game offers a satisfying, fun experience. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below, tell me what you think about RoboCop Rogue City, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because you want to be subscribed, and I'll see you next time.